Hi everyone, it's Adrian Pangilinan here again and welcome back to the fourth episode of The Soul Supremacy where we talk about all things unapologetic and all things in pursuit of and passion. I said that backwards, but oh well, just roll with it. So for today's episode, we have our friend, my friend, Steve, Mr. Steve Gonzalez over here. And let me pull up my nose, hold on, my phone just turned off. But our friend Steve here is a... Is based is first of all, first of all, he's based in New York, New York City. He is a visual artist, style curator, brand consultant, and a fashion designer. And if you're wondering, I pulled this off your Instagram, and I'm actually really <laughs> glad that you have it up there because I'm like, yes, yes, and yes. So everyone, let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Insert sound effect, whatever. There you go. <laughs> Steve, again, thank you so much for for being here. Thank you, thank you for um, gracing our podcast with your with your brilliance. Um, <laughs> okay, so I have um, so before we get to the main interview, actually, I just have five icebreaker questions that I want us to get started with. Okay. Okay. So the first one is. What are five things that people would not know about you from a first glance? All right. First and foremost, let me say thank you so much for having me. So I'm very excited to be able to be part of this project that you're doing. So thank you for thank that. You. Um, so the question is, what are five things that people wouldn't know about me? Mm-hmm. Who? From a first glance, like, like if someone saw you for the first time, what would those five things be? They might not know that I'm very, okay, so I'm going to maybe say a few and I'll think I'll have to think about the rest of them. Oh, yes. Um, And then I'll go answer them later on because I really don't know the answer like in the top of my head. But I know you're good. One of the things that I guess I will say is people don't really know how passionate I am about what I do Um, because I, I feel like I wear too many hats on the stuff that I'm doing right now. And they might not know certain things that I, that I really like. For example, I might not show on my page a lot, but I'm really into coffee shops, right? I'm really into reading. I'm really into um, business. Like, I love business. I love history. Um, so those are just some of the things that just seeing me, you won't really know much about me because I'm, I feel like at first I'm kind of clumsy and I come up as a really uh, Relatable. nice... Relatable. Steve, you, uh, yeah, I mean, you, but I you come like, out relatable. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 approachable, you know. Uh, but go ahead, continue. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it, it might get confused with how you you see me, and I think you know me better than anybody else. But you know, when I'm really into like working and doing stuff like that, I take this stuff very serious. And like, oh yes, I've seen, I've seen them serious. work once, and I was shook, and I was like, <laughs> that was really really nice to get a take yeah, I, like that experience. So. Yeah. Yeah. So in the okay. rest, let me think about them. But yeah, this is some of the things that I think people want to assume about me in the first meeting. No, that was good. No, you said you no, you actually that was a multifaceted answer. You said a lot in that like one kind of tidbit. So that's actually good. Okay. The next question is what is your favorite food? Japanese food. Which one? Oh, if I had to choose one on top of my head, mm-hmm. I guess sashimi, sushi. Sashimi? Yeah. I think I've had that once. And I was like, oh, this is not sushi or like like the sushi that I normally eat, but mm-hmm. it's still wrapped in the thing, right? It's 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 like a oh sashimi. It's um uh it's like ground beef and like vegetables. No. <laughs> no? Oh, sashimi. Never mind. What is it, Steve? What is it then? Tell me, tell me what it, it is. It's very similar to sushi, but it's just like the opposite of it, like. Yeah, the fish on top, and then you see a little sashimi. Okay. <laughs> the little ball. Probably people know it by sushi. Like, they think because you go to a sushi bar, they will serve it. But uh-huh. yeah, that's what I, I like the most, yeah. Does it have the orange, like, eggs on it? Or is that a different one? Um, You're talking about, like, a bowl? No, no, no. The, the sashimi, the, do they have, like, the... Like the yeah, the yeah, you can have a little eggs yeah, or whatever yeah. it's called. The little, the little fish eggs. Yeah, you can have it with it. Yeah. Oh, I'll just kidding. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, next question West Coast or East Coast? East. Why? Um, I like how diverse it is over here. I love the diversity. 
I mean, I'm in New York City, so it's a hub. It's like the capital of the world, I would say. But I like how, one, I don't have any earthquakes here. <laughs> I'm really uh, afraid of earthquakes. I live in Mexico City, and then on the West, we get earthquakes a lot often. So I was, like, trapped in an elevator a couple of times when I was a kid in Mexico City due to earthquakes. So I don't, I don't like earthquakes. Um, and I also like my four seasons. I like to feel mm. them. Like, I feel like California, the West Coast is very like laid back and chill. And like, even if we go to Seattle, that was going to be gloomy. And I like the four, the four seasons that we get here. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I've only been, I visited, visited New York twice in like different seasons, mm-hmm. but it, it does. I can see that, um, in the East Coast. Specifically, you can actually get like a clear breakdown of the four seasons. Whereas in the West Coast, and I'm in California, it 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 all becomes it like blends, which is not bad, but it just blends. You know, it's like, okay, sure, okay. Yeah. Next question: Your favorite self care routine? Oh my god! So I do like a strict freaking like facials, like in my face right now. Lately, for the past maybe five six years, I've been really into like skincare. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like sometimes a little bit hectic. Like I, I mask daily. Like I put on mask. Right now I have this sake mask, um, Japanese that I bought at the Japanese market. But I also I'm working with this, uh, with a couple uh beauty brands, and so I'll do the whole serum and I do the whole scrubs and I do all kinds of lotions. I I do like skincare routine my favorite. Nice. Um, how old are you? Thirty five. 35 okay that wasn't part of the question actually just because just because when you start talking about your um uh self-care routine i know that usually people okay realistically the older you get the more the more wrinkles you can have not necessarily necessarily you know so all i wanted to say was your skin looks good okay <laughs> okay Thank and you. last question actually last question so I think this is funny. <laughs> okay. So if you had to choose between the two, your line of work now or Charming Charlie? You know what? I love the place where I'm at right now. But I feel like when I was there, it gave me a lot of foundation for a lot of things because I was really... I started... Prior to Charming Charlie and all this, when we met, I feel like I was a very single-minded person and what i mean by that is like i wasn't open to other people's opinions to the people's feelings and i didn't really feel like i needed anybody else to get the job done and then now the more grows and the more i see it's like i was wrong in a way so like mm. i i love that because it, it really taught me a lot like every single job that i had believe it or not even though some of them i wasn't so into them other one of my thing like working at a bank and like working in retail and working with other places. It wasn't really my thing. Um, they gave me a lot of growth and experience and they helped me along my career a lot, a lot. I, get, I feel like that, that's what launched me to where I'm at right now and gave me the base for all those things because I learned so much in every single um, step that I took in my career. Nice. They were necessary pretty much to be where I'm at today. And you know what too, I would have to you know, say too that it does take us like, a certain level of maturity to just be able to get to, you know, with what you just said, you know, to actually be able to be like, Hey, this is where I came from and I've learned from it. And I don't at all, you know, look down on where I came from, you know, and, and, and That's honestly, I, I'm, I'm the same way too. And I mean, while for me, I may have my own quirks about like the past jobs that I've had more so like the negative experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all I would that. actually not, change anything because for me personally and i'm sure for you too and many people watching this or listening to this it's like we get to where we are by taking the next best step after leaving the previous step you know so you wouldn't be where you're at if you basically never like not just not had had those things but if you never left those jobs because if you say that charming charlie well the charming charlie (laughs) plaza bonita has been closed for a while now so (laughs) yeah sad i know i heard I know it's it's sad, which actually then segues me to the main interview. Okay, so who is Steve? Who is Steve? Yes, who are you? He's someone who is trying to discover and rediscover himself every day. Someone that grows every day. Someone that's a very emotional and sensitive human that 
sometimes has a lot of flaws, but I feel like those flaws will help him be what he is. Like he's very resilient. He's very consistent in what he does when he wants something. And I feel like as bad as this is, this is a good thing as well that I do love him and myself is I can't take no for an answer when I want something. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm the type that is going to go after it. Even if I had to spend my whole life going after it, I'm going to do it. And, you know, just having like, I remember since I was like younger, I knew kind of like the direction I wanted to go. And it was like, I'm going to have to put school in a pause for a little bit. And it was hard on everybody, like even my mom and stuff like that. You know, they were like, no, why do this, continue to do that? And it was like hard for them to have them see my vision that I had of myself. But now that things are starting to pay off that way, it's kind of like, oh, I understand where you were coming from. So, yeah, that's why I am. Somebody that evolves daily, too. Every day I'm growing. Every If you talk to me today and then by the time this probably launches, I'm going to be a different person. So yeah. it's like my growth. I feel like I wasn't growing for so many years that now my growth is literally like a day could change me completely. I could literally grow and keep on growing and. Like I said, someone who's very passionate about what he does. Um, I think that's what it could really define me or, or could uh, describe me pretty well. That's beautiful. That, that That's really beautiful. I, I, I felt that. <laughs> I Especially the first thing that you said, I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Yes. That's all I'm going to say. I felt that. It's, it's so, it's strong. You know, it's like, and while also it does take for a strong person to to be like, to have to be able to face themselves, look at themselves and, and be like, wow, wow, wow. Okay. What else? <laughs> you know, like what's next, yeah. you know, keep walking yeah. forward. You, you keep, you keep moving forward as you keep looking at yourself, you know? So thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, how did we meet? I, I love asking everyone this question. <laughs> we used to work together. <laughs> yeah. Work. Yeah. Okay, I'll say something. Um, he was my uh, he was my assistant manager at Charming Charlie. This was like 2011, so I had just graduated from call and no high school. Literally, this is the <laughs> first job that I had after high school. I was like, I need to work, and then he was there, and I've just always remembered that we got we we always got along. You know, we always considering, got yeah, oh. yeah, and From you know, I. Yes, except yeah. So that that was almost 10 years ago and yeah. I mean just like you, I when I okay, so honestly when I think of our line of work back then, charming Charlie to be specific, I actually have nothing but like oh shoot, sorry. Sorry, Mike. I have nothing but good memories. Like right. really fond memories, like even when I go to the mall sometimes and see that it's now closed and back then it the the comic store took over it like i would walk inside and and literally um still feel and, and have like memories of like the the good times the growing times in there you know it's a lot of growth yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep that yep exactly okay so steve um would you mind sharing with us about some of your life experiences um growing up as a kid some of my life experiences. So um, I traveled a lot when I was a kid and I never really grew up with friends that I could keep for longer than five years because I moved a lot when I was a kid. Um, I loved traveling when I was a, a younger kid. However, I, I moved so often that I would like never got to see like to keep my elementary friends and, you know, get in touch with them. You know, it's so easy now with Facebook and all that. But for many years, I would move back and forward places. So I feel like as a kid, it was hard because I never had uh, like a close best friend because I always had to move. So I felt like since I was young, even though I have so many flaws, I learned to live with them and be okay with it because <laughs> I always had to pretty much be with my family, my brother, my brother, my sister. So we were always fighting, but we were close. When it came down to it, it was like, that's all we had. We only had us three because we were always moving, changing schools, changing cities. From the U.S. to Mexico, Mexico back to the U.S. And yeah, so it was um, it was good and bad. You know, I had fun experiences, bad experiences. And that's something that I, uh, it was like for me growing up. Also, I, I went to a Japanese institute when I was in uh, elementary and middle school. So 
elementary? Oh, wow. Yeah, still elementary. Elementary middle school. Yeah, that's something a lot of people don't know. And that's where I started getting like the love for Japanese culture. I didn't I, I didn't know that actually. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I went to a okay. Japanese institute when I was at uh, elementary. That makes sense. Middle. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if you mentioned why 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 your family moved a lot. Um my dad and like his job and so we actually um I grew up in a city, right? And then we had a ranch mm-hmm. outside of the city that we used to go to like for the weekends. But then we, my dad decided to build a house, like a house to actually live in, like a nice house, comfortable house to live in. And we decided to move there. So then we switch it back to the, the weekend. We'll go to the city and we used to live in the ranch. And yeah, so I grew up with like horses, cows. Um, yeah, I was cow like- Cow bells, cow bells. There you go. Uh, I, I, was, I had like a whole farm growing up and like, I feel like some of the discipline that I had <laughs> later on in my life was due to that because I had animals, right? And yeah, they were your we friends. Had, yeah, and we had to feed them. And like we had yeah. to walk, it was almost like an acre of land. So we had to walk far to go feed them. And like we like the, the people that used to help us with the animals, they were not allowed to do that. So we had a specific job on one give us. So we we're like, oh shoot. oh shoot. We couldn't get away what, with it. So like what was your job? I'm curious now. Um I, I had a cow. So I had to go and feed my cow. <laughs> Did your cow. cow have a name? Uh, yeah, she had an actually it was a sad story because somebody stole it from me. They they took it from me. I think two years before I moved back to the U.S. And dude, that was the, that was my first time I think feeling depressed because they took it from me. She was like my friend. So oh, this no. cow was like not for us to consume it to eat it or anything. It was just like a baby cow that yes my dad bought, and so we got really attached to it. So I used to walk oh. her like I would put her in a leash and walk her around like she was a dog. So. You could imagine my mom would get her candies and like she was really attached to the family. So it meant a lot. So I was like, so, so sad. My brothers had their horses and then my little brothers. I mean, we had ducks and turkeys and geese and all kinds of stuff. So wow, rabbit, chicken. Yeah. So uh, we had my cows too. <laughs> Parents, sheep, all kinds of. We had like a whole farm, like a full on farm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, and then something the weekends I'll help my dad whenever I'll see him, I'll help him in the house and like cutting the grass every once in a while and whatnot. But yeah, um, I was also in school and then I was doing martial arts. So wow, then it really sounds like you really had a very very well-rounded, well-rounded um, life growing up. Yeah, I believe so. I feel like I did. Back then, I didn't see it that way. And I used to complain about everything, but now I feel oh. like I was I had a blessed and very happy, like very good childhood. You know what? I you know what if I'm being honest, I don't blame you either because that's how I feel about um just being like, you're gonna do everything, you know? And I'm like, eh, you know. But I mean, I mean, just I mean, I could I could only imagine because I've been to a farm. I think my relatives, my uncle, they they owned a farm in the Philippines. So we would go there. And I was also a kid too, and I was like, I, I still vividly remember the stench and the smell, the aroma of the farm. And as strong as it is, it is very, it's it's very cathartic, you know, like being in there. But yeah. also I could see where you probably also feel like for a kid, I, you know, I really should not be doing at least, you know, like a kid being a kid versus yeah. a kid having to, to have a lot of responsibilities more than a yeah, kid yeah, yeah. should maybe have, you know? Yeah. But you know what? I feel like my responsibilities were not forces. I mean, they were at the time by my parents, right? But mm-hmm. it was something that like distracted me and kept me away from things because we, I was also always going to adventure. We had a motorcycle and we had horses. So whenever we wanted to, we just go on an adventure, go like an hour and a half, two hours to a new town and like discover places. And like, yeah, it was crazy. It was like, y'all, okay. So y'all literally lived in your own world. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't have neighbors for like at least two miles, three miles. We had like no neighbors. Like, no neighbors. Oh, we're the only house there. And coming from a contract of living in a city, when it was a building of like, you know, in one building, we have like 15, 20, 30 kids that we all play together just out of one building in Mexico City to that. Mm-hmm. It was a, like a different contrast. But I, I love yes. it. I, I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it now, especially now as I'm older. I'm like, oh my God, I kind of want to go back to that <laughs> when I get older enough. Yeah. So then, okay, so then I'm curious, like, so how old, so so like, if, if you were to give me like a age bracket, like from like how old like like what was the age range basically at that life i think i moved back to six uh mexico city when i was five i had my sixth birthday there so it was maybe like 10 or 11 
Oh, and wow. then 11 to 14, I moved back to the U.S. It was maybe like five years because, like I said, we, that was our weekend uh, home, like getaway. We used to live mm -hmm. in the city, so we'll go to the ranch and like enjoy our time. And, but we didn't have a full, the house was small, and then my dad built around and he made it like actually a home for all of us. So, but at first it was just like a little farm, like a little getaway house and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. So then at that age or maybe around that time, did you have any inkling, any idea that the life that you're living now will be the life that you're living now? No. No. What were your dreams as a kid? I'm curious. Um, I wanted to follow the footsteps of my dad. So I wanted to be an architect, but I feel like I used to say that because I was pressured into doing that because I was like, like yeah, my brother wanted to be the lawyer and then but my sister, a doctor, I believe. And then I was like, well, I'll be the architect like my dad. Uh, I like business, though, a lot. And I used to do business when I was a kid. Like, I, I love business. I love business. However, I really didn't feel like, the, once I got to, like, high school, I feel like I did. that's not what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. the only thing I do remember is, like, I enjoy my martial arts, but I wasn't the best kid. And I really enjoy art classes that I took. Um, I had like a painting class and music and I enjoyed it, but I also felt like I wasn't as strong as at anything. Like I wasn't as did strong have, as at music. Did you ever do dance? I'm just curious. I did dance. Yeah. Yeah. But I did dance later on in high school. Like, uh, okay. We, I'll do it. Yeah. Later on. And that, I was good at dancing. I love dancing, but, um, I don't know. I just didn't see it ending there. Like I didn't see that. And a lot of the things, I, I feel like the foundation that I got for many things came out later on. And like yeah. I wanted, we started to do fashion and all that. And like, um, like I said, reading and languages and all that, that came probably from my mom. Um, because growing up, I would hear her like practicing uh, French and Italian. I don't think she could speak any of it now, but she always, she's the one that pretty much put different language into me that pursued me to wow. like learn another language and another language. Yeah, it was her. So um yeah i didn't think i was gonna do this I, like i said i was i loved art i wasn't the best i love music i wasn't the best um i love sports god knows i wasn't the best so like he was he was something Same. i had to figure out like the only thing i knew i was good at is like i had some sense of style since i was a kid okay <laughs> I, like I could tell you this right now and like that's how like when i did my reflection of what i really wanted to pursue that's how I, I like i asked so many people like what do you think i'm good at right and like i was oh, being honest with myself, like mm -hmm. I was being true, completely honest to myself. Like, what do you think I'm good at? And like, I think out of the 30 people I asked, though, like the only way I see you is like with style, fashion. That's the only thing I really see you. And that's how, like, I, I kind of knew I had an inclination towards it, but I wanted to ask people what else I'm doing good. And they will say things like, you know, I feel like you're dedicated to this, dedicated to that, but nothing came out. The most uh, conversation we had was mostly fashion. And that's when I decided to really push into it. It sounded like, and, and, Please feel free to cor correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like you were just looking for the validation that you needed to hear that this was the route that you wanted to pursue. You know what? I did a lot, of, like a lot of like learning and like growth and like, and I'm talking about this is like 21, Paul Charlie, I think 22, 23, or during that time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that I suffered like a lot of people did. Some people suffered it earlier, later on, that when they were in a midlife crisis. It wasn't my 20, early 20s, but it wasn't midlife, but it was like, People say like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be at or I don't know what that I'm going to be. That is where I'm at now. Yeah, so I went through that. And, and you know, it's funny because like that's a journey we all have to take. And that's a journey yeah. that like for me, I have to do a lot of self-reflection, a lot of get, getting away from people by myself. I had to reinvent myself. I left friends for that reason. It's like, it, it's like you literally have to like, the way I was able to discover this and rediscover truly who I was and like accept the mistakes and the paths that are my flaws that I have. And my strengths, it was through that. Like, I did a lot of self-reflection for, like, two, three years. Like, literally, I'll do getaways by myself as much as I can. And I'm not talking about even just going on a trip, but, like, you have to reflect and take time to see what you wanted and what you could give out to, back yeah. to the world. Because I, I, if I was being honest to myself, I wasn't going to be the architect my family wanted to be. Like, that was just wasn't going to be anything. Now that I, I don't enjoy the art of being an architect and a designer and I, uh, what my dad was doing, but that is, he, he just wasn't for me. and. I feel like um, it was hard at first because, like I said, telling my, you know, my mom. Uh -huh. you know, that yes, I was it is. Yeah, it, you know how it they're, is. They're going to have like a stick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> it, I mean, 
I do also have to give a lot of props to my mom, I guess, because she always like, she gave me advice, but she encouraged me to follow what I really want. She never said no. She tried to give me the best advice she could, but she also allowed me to be free and do, make my own decision. And I feel like through those failures is really how I build character in life too. Mm, okay. She didn't protect I, me from it. She wasn't like, oh, you, you must do that. Or you must, no, nah, she said, you know, you're an adult. You, you can make your own decision. So she gave oh. me that freedom also helped me out a lot. Like, yeah. Wow. That I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless. Mm. Let, let me, let me have a sip too. Hold on. Cheers. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Actually, that is perfect because that does lead literally lead me to my next question, which is when and what was that clear moment? Okay, so I guess what you just said right before this was the process to yeah. getting there. But then yeah. my question is when and what was that defining moment when not only you found out that this was something you wanted to do, but then you're like, I'm going to put all of my eggs on this. And that I will actually, that I will really, really pursue this wholeheartedly and I'm going to go, which I know you did, which is why I wanted to really ask this question. I, I feel like it was like a series of events that led to this, but I'll tell you one event that really pushed me into it. And this is when I was already a little bit more into like designing. I think I had started going to design school. I saw a trend in the U.S. that. And not to say that you is not a trendsetter. We are the trendsetters here big time. But I felt like everybody was going towards one style. And whenever I try something new, I feel like people were afraid of it. Or they will assume that a heterosexual male wasn't allowed to break the stereotypes and do certain things that I was doing, right? Like uh -huh. self-care, for example, six years ago. Uh huh. It, it was like, you know, I like to take, take care of myself for me. I wasn't doing it for anybody else. I literally like, enjoy looking at myself good and I feel good. When I feel good, I could do better. I could do good, right? What's it? You know, when you met me, you were also in shape and I was also working out. I remember you were in really good shape and I remember Thank I thought you. you had like strong legs, strong. And I, I mean, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So like, I, 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 that was, I was doing that for me and for my own benefit and my own health. I wasn't doing it for anybody, trying to impress anybody. I wasn't doing it. By, that, by then, I wasn't doing it for nobody. I was doing it for me because I was always a small yes. kid, a weak kid. And then like, I feel like, that really gave me, made me feel good. So it was one time that I remember, um, I was actually still charming Charlie. I was wearing like a pair of like crop, low, uh, crop trousers from ASOS that I bought. Um, mm -hmm. And they were like from, from uh, the UK, right? And they were like oversized and I wore them with a t-shirt because I used to follow a lot of Korean fashion, Japanese fashion. And I went to a party after work and, and in a weekend and people were making fun of me because of the way I was dressed. And I was like, you know what? It's so close-minded here that this is really what I want to push with people to start seeing. This is, I think Instagram was starting to roll out. And I, uh, I believe the first time I did that, I did not know about it. But I was like, I really want people, because I'm pretty sure there's people out there like me that don't want to dress like everybody else or don't want to follow things like everybody else. Or that don't and have the like, courage to actually, maybe they want to do it, but they don't have the courage. Sure, sure. I mean, like I said, it wasn't Many common, reasons. I, I want to say this openly, right? In 2010, it wasn't common for heterosexual men to take very good care of themselves and being to fashion, like for me, for example, right? I wasn't into doing like manly, manly things that people will say, like, you know, that the, the society put it in you, like, oh, go and fit oh, yeah. work in your car and do this. I did it, but I was really <laughs> more into fashion. I was really more into like going shopping and really. I mean, you're at the gym. I mean, from when, when I met you, I remember, I yeah. I actually just remembered now that you're always at the gym, at least yeah. those gym pictures. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it was like, I could also be shopping. I spend my time. I could be at the mall shopping. Like I would love to do that. You know, like mm. a couple hours. That was like therapy for me. I'm um, going to thrift shops and uh, stuff like that. It was like I kind of wanted. Like I am surprised we never went together because I would love to go to the thrift store too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was just that. It was like that was one of like the many things. Like I said, it was it was a couple okay. of situations, but that was one that really I feel like impacted okay. me and they started me to start pushing. Like you know what. I really need to show people like out there other stuff. And like, I feel like I could make something, an impact on people, even if it's one found, person, but there's going to be an impact. You right. found that purpose then. You really found that you've had the calling, but then you found the purpose in, in a line. Yeah. You're like, I feel this yeah. way. Yeah. And now I need to meet it halfway. So now I'm in order for me to meet it halfway to get my message across, I'm going to have to, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I had a follow up question. Um, Okay, then what was that 
what was that moment then that you decided to New York? Because I remember meeting up with you. This was this wasn't too long ago, but this was a little bit while back, like three years ago, when um, we met up for uh, to take pictures. And I, I remember you. We haven't seen each other in like a minute. And and then when you said you were about to move to New York, I was like, oh, <laughs> how did that happen? I'm curious. Is that plan that I had since I was like I said, like in high, like almost in high school. I always planned to move to New York. Um, oh, okay, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. So like the problem, like the situation because the lifestyle that happened or whatever situation we all have in life, you know. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it took longer for me to get to where I wanted to, but I always knew, like I said, I always had a plan. Like I mastered my plan. Oh, early that makes, on. Like that I makes knew sense. what I was gonna now. do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are things that, like I said, like. It's funny because like at some point I feel like stuck, like I will have things mapped out and planned out and they were not working out, but that's the way life works sometimes. Like, and I feel like whoever I told about this, or, like the few people that I told them were like, oh yeah, he's never going to do that. And then when I did it, people were like, oh shoot, you're really going for it. And, and you've and, like yeah. transcended even more basically. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because like, you know, like I said, if we go back to like what a male my age should be doing, should be probably thinking about your career, right? By my age, you probably have kids and married and those were never my plans. Those were never my, that, that was never like even Speak until the, the later on. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, and like I said, it, it was harder for like, I feel like my mom, I don't know anybody else, but they, she trusted me the most. So it was like, if she doesn't care, you know, if she backs me up in what I'm doing, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to please anybody else. Even my own, my own family, like even my, my mom's okay with it. I don't care what anybody, my siblings, my uncle, my, I, don't, I really wouldn't care. And that was, I always had the attitude of like, not caring what other people think. I I would lie to I would lie if I say I really I never listen what people say, but at the end of the day I I make my own judgments and I trust myself. And if I make a mistake, I take it as a learning step, a learning curve. I never take it as a uh I never beat myself up for it. I always try to learn from okay. it. I say this is a good thing it happened now. I'm ahead. I'm ahead of people because now it happened to me right now. This happened, I could learn mm -hmm. from it. So did you ever have moments of wavering where you're like oh shoot i'm scared <laughs> yeah you feel scared yeah yeah e every time every time like i'm sure yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yes that, that little fear that you have is what keeps you pushing and moving because i feel like i fear that i don't do something right it, and it's not that i need validation but it won't inspire people anymore i feel like if i don't do something sometimes correctly i don't reach a certain thing it's like Although I'm doing it for me, I feel like people that really believe in my journey is going to be disappointed. So that little fear sometimes and like, you know, sometimes you have the fear that you can't do things and you can't, how are you going to do it? But um, this goes a little bit deeper. I feel like I always believed in a mm. higher being, whatever that being is, yes. the universe, mm. God, Buddha, Dharma, oh, universe, what, whatever you believe in, right? Yes. I believe in one and I believe like God had always been on my side in that sense and like as long as I prayed to him and as, as long as we communicated and I felt like it was oh. good, I, I felt like I was going to get out of it. Met I, I never way. fell in Met a situation them. I was not going to yes. be able to meet. Yeah. So. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you for speaking live so far. It's only been like 37 minutes and I'm already like, oh, shoot. Okay. My next question is, um, okay, so then we are in New York now. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind please... <laughs> Excuse me. Would you please um, explain a little bit more about the line of work that you're doing? Because I did see that you are a person of so many beautiful talents, Thank and you. and and that's why for me I was like, is there a way to? I mean, I mean, of course, not right now, but maybe sooner than later, I'll be like, oh yeah, he is this. But yeah, if you can just explain about the line of work that you do, and yeah, yeah, so. Um, prior to going full-time uh, content creator, which is this, I curate, uh, you know, my feed and I, I work with brands and consulting. Um, I was styling. I was working for Georgia Money uh, Corporation and prior to that in Burberry and their flagship and their respective flagships here in New York and from the Americas, the flagship from the Americas. Um, and I started styling celebrities because of the line of work that I did. And mm. I really, really, really enjoyed it. But I also started getting more job as a photographer, a visual artist, um, creating concept for brands. And they would trust me with the vision that I had of, of creating a concept for them to, to speak about their DNA 
of their product or tell the story that the brand wanted to tell and they would trust me with their vision and yeah. that's what I've been doing. I've been photographing a lot and I've been editing a lot and I'm learning so much and it's like you know you know me when we first met I was not into photography and I remember you were like I was I didn't know much about it right? I know we switch but it's okay yeah. there's seasons for everything right <laughs> I took the Adrian <laughs> because I remember, I, you know what I remember one photo shoot we had that I still love that I think I was also working at Armani but in fashion balance San Diego uh, we did a photo shoot one time and I was like baffled by the way you were directing me and like I love that I feel like that really made me push even harder for the photography because before that I was just more yeah. into like doing it for the Instagram and for like you know not professionally done but I remember the way you were directing me and telling me things and like seeing it all come to life um that that really made an impact on me like i learned i was like okay i'm gonna get this from him like whatever it is i'm gonna get the good things like Thank like you. out of everything and, whenever and I you did somebody, and I'm you absorbing. did i'm absorbing everything like you better believe if you don't want me to be your competition then don't come and ask me to be with you because i'm gonna learn so much from you and i'm gonna absorb a lot of things and mm-hmm. and i took it like i remember when you took direction and you told me do this post stronger it's gonna feel weird but it looks better on camera to this day i used to do it. last last two days mm-hmm. i did that somebody and it's like I remember every time I'm going to remember that came from you because it's funny how you make it all. It's just a vision and you make it all come to work. And like an image is something timeless. Like what else do you think? People thought that print was going to die, right? Print is coming back big time, big time. Oh yeah. Uh, Photography, right? People was like, oh, because the the new technology is going to die. It's not going to die. Film film is like back. Film is like back as heck. (laughs) It's forever evolving. It's forever going to be evolving. Recycling too. Uh, absolutely it's like fashion fashion is cycles circles right um but it, it's it's a beautiful art anything that comes with art is always going to be something that you could if you're passionate about it you could always make a living out of it and i feel like the impact that you could leave out of art whatever the line of work is chef uh mm-hmm. you're doing styling you're doing fashion creating dance it's all art. i feel like almost everything to me is art right even mm-hmm. math um you're gonna leave such a strong impact if you're very uh, passionate about what you do. Whew, I definitely needed to hear that. Um, <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Steve. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, then that leads me to my. Shh. Hey, I'm on an interview, doggy. <laughs> um, that leads me to my next question. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I don't hate my dog. Uh, I was so lost into what you were saying that I was like, oh shit, I have to like be able to like come out of it for a second to oh, you know questions. what but oh, let, let, let me retract something so i didn't even answer your question right so i do photography because i feel like all kinds of things that i'm doing i work too many hands right yeah oh yeah I'm, go ahead <laughs> i'm working on my own brand right so I still, i'm still designing i do photography i do editing i do modeling and i do consulting for brands what kind of editing just to to be clear uh photography editing and so um Whatever last picture, who's the last person I worked with? Uh, Kenneth Cole, I believe. Uh, yeah, they used to tell me with the whole vision. I do, I curate feeds for them and I do stuff for their feed and for mine. I do everything from, you know, they, they just give me an idea or actually they, they were free to give me 100% freedom. I just uh, had to come up with a concept and then pass it uh, by them. That is, that is so beautiful when you're given yeah. the freedom and the trust. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was that. So yeah, that's a little bit of what I've been up to late and what I do. I wear too many hats. <laughs> That's good, and I mean, from from from, yeah. it's it's work. It's it's clearly working for you, and of course, mm-hmm. you know there are you know the the not not even the naysayers, but there could be that opinion of like you should only niche down and focus on one, you know, which is which is super interesting because when it when like with me, I super relate to just being like, why do I have to limit myself to one when I know that I've like. You and I and many people are very, very multifaceted. We uh, we have many, many different tools and skill sets that we can offer and instead of just limiting to one, you know. Um, so my next question is for someone that is aspiring to be in the same um, career path trajectory as you are, as you, um, you know, you were able to get yourself into, um, what are some of the steps that you would, uh, steps and advice that you would like to give a uh, share? Um, well, like I said, I, I feel like in the middle of the interview, we we're kind of talking about it. Make sure that when you choose a career, like what they call it nowadays, right? They call some people call this influencing. 
make or influences or that word it is. It, to me oh, like, my bad, sorry. It makes it, it kind of like cuts you short of what you really are because you have so many different hats. Um, whatever you want to do, right? Artist, wh- whatever you really feel like you're doing, make sure you're really passionate about it. Make sure you really search deep inside you and have something of value to you could provide to people. Mm. Because I feel like you have a passion for it, right? You're somehow okay at it. You're a little bit good at it, right? Or whatever you, you want to do. Uh, but you you have to also be humble and learn so much and really get into that. Like, you need to almost be obsessed with it. Like, this mm-hmm. night, what I couldn't sleep because I would edit for two days straight almost. Because I was still taught. Nobody told me. Nobody told That's me beautiful. Like, that is so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Like, and, and I'm talking about two years ago I was doing that. I'm, You're I'm so excited. Like, You're so excited that you can't sleep. Story, yeah, I'm not telling you about a story that like happened 10 years ago. It happened about now. Like when I was trying wow. to build my business, when I fell the first time in my business, you know, with the with the men's wear and with the ties and all that, I I spent hours, hours and hours finding suppliers, communicating with suppliers from across overseas, yes. and like I learned so much. So like you really need to be passionate, and you really need to see the end goal ahead of you because things oh, are not, never gonna go as you expect them to. Go. So like you you need to have some if you're gonna choose. The freelancer career, right? Because that's freelancer. what, yes, that's where I'm at now, sir. You have yes, to sir. have some sort of nerve and some sort of belief in yourself that it has to be insane that people say you're crazy for believing that. Because if you don't hear that and people don't think you're crazy, you're not going to survive in this business because things never go how you expect. You go from not working one week or one month almost, right? Yeah. Or not having paid partnerships or gigs or whatever to being booked for literally two months straight without stopping. So it's yes. like you need to be able to adjust and adapt and be ready at all times. So during the downtime, what are you going to do? Are you going to be wasting your time or are you going to be learning? You're going to be applying it to something. You're going to be it's growing. A growth. It's an everyday growth. You, you know, it's funny yeah. because the modern day, the, the way we are in modern day is like you go to school for a certain amount of years and then you stop, right? When you look uh-huh. at amazing civilizations that built so much, um, like the Greeks, they never stopped going to school. It was a forever thing. Like you will be a 50-year-old man still going to school. And nowadays we, we try to because school became a business and they try to push everything into yes. two years. Right? Go ahead, throw you out in the world, and you're not even sure what you want to do. That they took out the value that school used to give for the business out of it. And and you like I say, that's what you always need to be learning. And you need to invest in it too. Like Yes. My advice is if when you want something, right? And especially in the field I'm in, like if you really want to start doing this partnership with the brands and want to start doing all this, you need to know how much work is getting into it because people think it's just cool to you post a picture or a video and it's like, oh, that took nothing. Mind you, I'm my own manager. I have to sign and create contracts by myself that nobody has taught me how to do it, right? I have to be able to photograph myself sometimes. You have to be able to speak very well in front of the camera to articulate certain things. Um, uh, it, there's so many hats that you have to wear that if you're not comfortable doing that, don't choose go and get a career in something else. Like I said, yeah. if you don't have some sort of nerve and like some sort of like believe in yourself, this is not gonna be for you because if you're always done in yourself, this is gonna this this business industry is gonna definitely eat your life. First of all, thank you for sharing all of that that wisdom. And then for for the people that are like, okay, I get it, you know, like they are in that mindset already. Um, what are some of the tactical like task or steps that you could actually provide for someone that's like okay i think i'm ready but then if you um then what do i do like where do i start you know like how does i guess this is the perfect um time to ask to like to like what is what does a day in your work life look like um so like i said you kind of have to Nobody's pressuring you, right? Right now, you're on your own. Like, nobody tells me to wake up early. I have to do it on my own. You have to have a lot of... I feel like if you're not a disciplined person, it's also not going to be hard for you to do because you have to discipline yourself to get out, reach out, answer emails, have a schedule that you have to do written down, um, invest money, invest time. Mm-hmm. But I guess if you want to say, okay, you have all those things going, right? How can you start? First thing I will say, invest as much as you can in equipment and good equipment. If you can, from the beginning, buy the. I know people say start with something non professional and then later on you develop, you're going to waste money with that. Start with something actually good for me with my mm-hmm. camera wise. To me, I would have jumped in better if I started with like the camera that I have now. 
and pro maybe I could have got a youth with a lot of miles in, in the camera and like, you know, I could have got a lens that wasn't so expensive and whatnot. Uh, but I would have definitely done that because you're going to end up, if you're really passionate about it, like you said, like you already have all those things and you know, you're going to keep this as a career to save you time and money, go with the best thing you can at the moment, go with yeah. the best money, the best money you have with the best money you could buy for what your budget is. That's one thing, right? Okay. Invest as much as you can watching your favorite creators, how they edit, how they do, how they create, how they come up with concepts as much as you can reach out to those people. I would say the third part is like reach out to those people. And so they know you're there. The reason why you want to do that is because you already, you're inspired by something, right? For, by someone you really like, and maybe you have different styles you want to be in. It's good to see their growth and what they're doing, what the daily is like, the everyday like, or reaching out to say, hey, you know, I would love to work with you whenever you have free time, or, you know, I'd like to invite you to our coffee. You don't know how, to, how many times I pay people's dinner just to meet them, you know, with them and get some knowledge out of them. Like, literally, I did this to many creators. Like, I'll be like, hey, come over. I'll, let me invite you to lunch and sit down and, you know, discuss with them how I will get ideas from them. Like, mm. it's funny that I did that because I've I done it many times. Wow. And when, it's like, because one, I did technically, you know, so it's like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, those are the things I will say, like, investing in, in some good equipment. Like, like I said, not everything has to be top of the line. But if, if you're going to ask me how I would have done it, I would have definitely went in from the beginning and spent a little extra. Like I can say, buy used equipment, it's fine. But by top of it, yeah. Because you're going to use that forever. Like, you're going to keep that for many years. Like, my setup now is like, I'm not going to change this for, even if the new mirrorless comes out, I'm, I'm not changing this. Oh, like, yes, my, yeah. I, I have my DSLR and I'm very happy with it. I use a 7200 right now, millimeter Canon, and I use a Mark IV, Ooh. 5D. Like, I'm not changing that. Like, I'm not, I'm not switching that. For a long Dang, time. okay. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you almost said Sony, but okay. Yeah, I, I had Sony. I had a Sony system. Oh, you did? Just kidding. I remember. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It was also, I had a, 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 first I had a crop sensor at 6300, and then I bought, invested in R2. Wow. So, so you, uh, do you have two gears at the moment? Two bodies? Uh, two gears? That's... Technically, yes, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, but, but, yeah. but I'm assuming you're only using one. You have a main one. The other one is just. Okay. Um, then just to kind of go back then, because at some point you did mention uh, uh, the discipline aspect of it, like making sure that you um, set the time and to, um, you know, uh, to, to actually like dedicate scheduled time for each of the yeah. tasks. Would you mind yeah. elaborating on that just a little bit more? Like how, like how do you schedule your day in terms of like, this is what, this is what I know I'm going to do in the midst of like, not not nothingness, but you know what I mean? The, the openness, you know? You have to keep yourself accountable. That's the number one thing, right? And the yeah. thing is, sometimes with this job, as I was saying earlier, you could have a job coming right now in the middle of the night. And by the time you wake up, the best thing to do is answer as fast as you can for the brand. Depend If you establish a relation with that brand, they know you could take some days, oh, you know, I mean, some hours to answer, but oh, yes. it looks good when you're waking up at six in the morning. And if you see an email, you reply within the 30, 40 minute, an hour. It, is a, it looks really good with the brand because they know you're disciplined. They know you're, you're up early doing things. So it depends. It, it, it's literally the reason why I say you have to be very disciplined and you have, you have to keep yourself accountable, which is one of the things I learned so much in retail and working at stores. You have to keep your accountability if you make a mistake. There's no such thing as, oh, well, it was somebody that woke me up. That's your fault. Like you need to keep yourself accountable for things. Um, your opportunities are yours only. And mm -hmm. there, there could be growth in those opportunities always and it's great, but those opportunity that you have that you're missing out on is because of you so something i could schedule my my day my day a night before sometimes i have to wake up in the morning and do it typically i have an idea but so for example i already i'll tell you what i have to do tomorrow right i took some pictures over the weekend for this brand that i'm working with the pictures are done i have to edit tonight and tomorrow and tomorrow i also have to do stories video stories for them and write captions and so tomorrow, what my day is going to look like is I will have to wake up early. I do a little bit of reading in the morning, like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, I do my workouts either in the morning or in the afternoon. So I'll probably have some coffee the first thing I do. Like before even eating any food, I go grab a coffee. Uh -huh. um, and I already have my time for what I have to do. So it's going to be the editing part. I'm probably going to dedicate an hour and a half to depending how many images I'm going to edit. Then I'm going to create the stories on two hours after that or so. Um, within that time frame, though, 
I'm going to be replying back to my emails as well because I know I have, I'm going to have emails in the morning. Um, yeah. And so if I have a photo shoot tomorrow, which I didn't schedule myself for one, but typically I'm mean shooting five days a week, um, I will make that trip to go and do a, my photo shoot. Um, and then I'll come back and then you submit the things that I have to submit, um, make some dinner, lunch, do my workout if I have, then do it in the morning. And then sometimes I make outfits, sometimes I'm learning. Like last night I spent another hour learning how to edit new, new like I said, I'm every, learning every day. Like if you look at my feed, it changes yeah. so much for that reason because I'm learning something every day. So the next thing I'm trying to learn is video and like be able to get it really good. So I'm, I'm spending all this time studying. So like I will say I do part-time working part-time studying and part-time creating on something that I really love. So for example, the other part of it too, I'll spend like an hour or two designing the concept for my new next brand. I'll be either like working it, catching something out, putting ideas together in a mood board or researching about that specific topic. And that's something I have to keep doing myself every day. So like if I didn't have a campaign to do, I would force myself to go out and shoot. And sometimes they just literally, I just get last minute photo shoots, not even from uh, brands, from people. So lately, I've been shooting a lot. A lot of the content that you see out of uh, the good influence coming out of New York, a lot of time I'm yeah. shooting the content. Like a lot of the time I'm just out there shooting it because like they know I'm always disciplined. I'm always there for it. It's very important to be available. And like if you get your first partnership, right, it's very important that you take the delivery time before they ask you. You over deliver because that's what's going to open the doors mm-hmm. to get more, more, more work later on. Let's say, for example, yes. you work in a public relations firm, right? You and I establish a relationship and you know me out of the 10 people you pick that I'm always turning my work thoroughly fast, right? And I'm always up to the brand standards, right? You move to a different company. You're at, you're automatically almost going to, your brain is going to say, let, let me push, pull this guy that I used to work with in that other brand to work now with me in this brand because I know he always delivers. So like those relationships and being, this is the reason why I say you have to be disciplined is because it matters. Like, you could literally mess up yourself in one job that you didn't do or you didn't present it right. Or This is why also it's like nerve wracking like, that you have to create and do things good because every single time I take this job serious, like you should see the people that are shooting me sometimes that I'm working with, like they know how frustrated I get and I feel bad for them because you, you one time you met me when I was like, you know how uh, I want to think that I would. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, I experienced you know, This is what I wanted to say I, at the beginning. People want to think that on me, no, right? I will have, hold on, sorry. But you know what? I will have to say though that even though that have I mean, not even though, but but like really now looking back at it, I'm like, I have not. I really have nothing but respect because then it's like the drive and really the, the this was there. And honestly, at the end of the day, in my opinion, you can never get mad. You can never hate on someone that is like super passionate about what they do, even though sometimes it could not. It could come off in a way that you know may not be to your liking, but that's relative. But also at the end of the day, it's about yeah. Yeah. No, okay. I, I, and I think, like I said, I, I think I'm going to learn how to deliver the communication better, but oh yeah, I, I know sometimes I don't know how to get that point across people, but it's like, I'm very passionate. I take this very serious. Like when people say, you know, how many people saying, teach me how to do this, teach me how to do that. I warn them now from, from the beginning, like, Hey, if we're going to work together, I'm going to spend time teaching you something. Just know that I'm going to expect you to be at your best. I take my things very serious and I'm very passionate. And I, even the smallest jobs, even when I'm doing even when I started, because I first all started doing it for free. I, I wasn't getting paid for anything. Mm-hmm. I took it with the seriousness he deserved. Like I took it as it was, I was working already for the big band, for the biggest company ever. And they expected me to deliver the way they, they trusted in me. So that's the way I, I see every single job I, I, got, I, I get. Nice. Okay, then I have, um, I have two more questions actually as we wrap this up. Um, so... I do feel like the whole time you were talking, what really kept coming to my mind was um, sustainability. And then at some point you started talking about your, at some point you started talking about your, um, like working with brands. Um, I'm curious, how have you been able to uh, price your work? Pricing your work. That, Whatever you want to share about that, that I'm, I'm I'm grateful. So it, it's such a good question because I, I think when you get to a level where you spend hours, right? I, I'm going to give you an example of people that I hear. There's people out there that, that charge you. Ever see those little memes or you see stories or you see like even posts about it, right? When people pay 
or when somebody gives a price and they pay for something and they get that ugly tattoo versus the professionally done, right? So, yeah. I feel like I put close to five years, even six years of experience into like one year that I feel like I have almost like 10 years into like what I've done. I've been doing it so fast and I'm, when I do something, people trip out because they're like, so for example, when I work with a client, right? And I charge by the hour. I might literally do the job they need to do, be done in an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm like, that's it. That's my hour. And then we were like, no, but we need, there's nothing else we need. We need, we got all the headshots we needed. We got all the outfits we need between the hour, right? Or even for our brand. I'll finish a concert that you should take like two days. I finish in an hour and a half of work, right? Uh-huh. But it's because I train myself and I spent hours learning about it. So you need to be honest to yourself. And it, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to gauge because yes. I have lost jobs in gigs, even recently. Because of, this, because of my pricing, right? Yes. How much value are you offering to, for that person, right? How much value are you doing? Are they going to be able to reuse your, per se, a post, right, that you're doing? Are they going to be able to also put on their page and create marketing with it? But also, if they're going to use it for selling marketing, that comes with a different price because that's not part of the contract. Um, I'm an independent worker. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't even have agents for this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working with someone, but then separated. So, yeah. Same thing with a modeling gig, right? How much do you value yourself at? That was your work. What are you going to do for that? So, for example, when I found out I was going to model this last time for this company, um, I put myself in a really strict diet because I had gained some weight. So I had to really put myself in a diet and a workout routine. Like, it's literally like you're keeping yourself accountable. So, you know, for a day, you know, you could, what, what are you going to charge for that? It's up to you because how much you value you put into that. Also, I will say you have to really see what, like, where you at, right? Like New York City is an expensive city. Like I can't charge what I probably would have charged back when I was in California because of the expenses that are here. It's completely different, right? And yeah. you need to see what brands you're working with. What what all the also are you gonna get something back in return from that? Like a lot of times I feel like the, the hard part for myself is not even the pricing. I'm gonna say was the hardest part. Getting gigs that make sense and stay true to your vision and to yourself. Right. So I I hate doing fast fashion, right? And at some point, some fast fashion companies reach out. And where is it that I gauge? Because I hate the damage that it does to the environment, right? And how is that going to look in my brand by myself? So you need to, like I said, those are things that you need to prioritize more than anything else. It's like you really need to value and evaluate yourself and, and see what, what you could provide, what kind of value you could provide for that person and, mm. and base price off of that. Um, but like I said, I started doing free. Everything I did was free at the beginning. Everything, yeah. I, I couldn't make a living out of it. Like, I couldn't even make enough to go out and get a dinner. Like, I was charging nothing, always. Yeah. And then it progressed into literally, like, the last year, I just took it, like, seriously. And then things just progressed into being a full-time job. Even through this pandemic, like, I am so sorry for everything that has been happening. And I feel awful about everything that has been going on. But there was such an opportunity for my profession that is, like, it's crazy how busy I am sometimes. Like, it's insane and like but also i invested like i said i the first time i went to pt in italy i invested the whole trip was invested on myself instead of me going out to grabbing something a nice dinner vacation i literally went to go work that's all i did and i made so many connections from there that it's like i came back oh yeah you did i remember yeah, yeah. by the time i came back to, to to new york it was like i have gigs lined up and i'm still not at the level where i want to be and because like i said i've been part of that the, the thing is that you don't see me working with a lot of the big name brands as I should, because I have many contracts, I have many opportunities, is because I don't undervalue myself. And I sometimes I, I feel like I cannot do it. I value myself. And it's like, I, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Like, I understand I'm going to have the nice Nike in my, on, on my resume, right? But you ain't selling and, your soul. And, and, you know, you need to know what you, what was your value in your worth. With the liquor company, the same as many liquor com- famous ones that I could be working with. But at the price they were trying to give me, it wasn't worth it, wasn't worth it for me. Because I, they have to put into consideration all the expenses I'm going to create and time and my creativity that I'm giving you. And it, it's, it's one of those things that you need to, I feel like the, gate, the way you measure your value is through, uh, your measure your worth is through value. That's the way I measure it. What kind of value could I give you? Mm-hmm. And it's worth it for you as a brand. If I'm asking, if not, then hey, it's not our time. It's going to come. It's not our time. I have brands reach out to me three times and I have to stay home and work together because we don't come in terms of agreement, whether it be because I don't want to do certain items they want me to do, because whether it be I don't have full access to creativity, whether it be because they want me to be not true to what I'm doing and I just can't do it. Wow. 
Yeah, but something like, like I said, either gauge because something you also say, hey, we also need to make a living, right? So like, it's a lot that goes into. That's why I say you need to really be like believing in yourself and focus and discipline because this, if you're gonna jump into this line of work, it's very hard. And I'm sure there's people out there that are, you know are verified that are a lot bigger than I am that are like telling you the same thing. Like, I'm hanging out around those people, I'm photographing those people, so that's why I know a lot of the information. And it's true to myself, and it's true to any level. It's just if you have the integrity, right? you put in the work, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off sooner or later. And you're out there making moves and trying to better yourself and learning, dude, it's sooner or later going to pay off. The way I look at it is it's not your time. Everything happens yes. for a reason. Like, it's not going to be your time. You could go around, think, you, you're going to think you're going to straight line, but then you're going to be in curves and going up and down hills. It's going to lead to it. It's just not your time. So be patient with it and keep on working on what you're doing. Wow. I mean, obviously, like my screen got brighter because the sun went. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. I, I, got, I mean, I have, I, I have like the final question I'm gonna ask. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you, thank you, thank you, Steve, for speaking life into, not just for myself, but for everyone that's really just trying to represent themselves, you know. And of course, as we all know, when you do that. Sometimes we have to leave certain things to make that yeah. happen. But yeah. But 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 you know what though? I mean, from our conversation, it's it's definitely super, super not impossible. Not not at all impossible. Right. So, yeah. It's not. Okay. So my final question is, and I think that maybe you've kind of maybe addressed to this, addressed this at some point, but what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? The legacy that I want to leave behind? Mm -hmm. you know it is and this is something that it, at first i wanted to leave the legacy of my business right of what the contribution that i gave to the world but i think that i want to leave the legacy of one the love that i have for for god right for people to understand that it was there's also somebody nothing is possible without that person above me and like i said it doesn't have to be the god that i believe in it could be whatever you believe in but nothing's possible without that extra, the, the bigger force from us, right? Not My health wouldn't be here, the opportunity that I have, the idea that I have, nothing would be possible without it. Second one is probably love. And the third one is the legacy of life is meant to be just as it is. Like, as much as you want to think, change things around, and, and, and I believe in destiny, right? You are going to transform yourself, but you have to go through the situations in life to the bad, to the goods and the bad, to get through where you're at. If you haven't got there yet, it's for a reason. And if you don't get there, it's ultimately your fault because your destiny is there. Everybody's destined to strive to be greatness. But it's how we make those decisions, those decisions we make that is going to make us lead to that, to that greatness or not. Everybody's great at something. Everybody is. Everybody's going to be excellent at something. Everybody. Everybody. So I want to also leave the legacy of people knowing that making mistakes and like going through tribulations and, and, and life it's actually a beautiful thing for everybody because that's what's going to lead you to your greatness. It's going to take time, but it's going to lead you to your greatness. It's a normal person. Everybody goes through it. Even a president goes through it. Even somebody that's born, born with like a silver spoon on their arm is going to go through it. So like, it's normal to make all the mistakes. It's normal to have flaws. It's normal to have opportunities. It's okay with it. I feel like we live in a world and everything's so superficial sometimes oh, that we act like we're not human beings, that we act that we don't have breakdowns, that we act that we don't get depression, that we act that we, there's not many things that we don't go through, right? Mm -hmm. But there is. And there's still people that push into it. If you, like I said, passion, if you know that you're passionate about something, it's going to drive you through it. The question I ask people, right? What would you be doing that you could be doing for free? If you weren't getting paid for it, your money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing for free? That's the question that I love to ask people to reflect on. Like, if money was not the issue, right? You have the money, right? What would you be doing that would make you get up every morning and go for it and learn and go better, grow better at it and create a legacy behind that? So that's what you need to think yourself about whenever you're trying to make this decision and trying to find yourself and trying to find what you're good at. Ask yourself that. What would you do that would make you happy? And try to pursue that. It might take it took me 10 years almost to get to, to that point because I was working full time and going to school full-time and also doing this. And it was like, even three years ago, I was still doing it. I was having a full-time job. I was going to school still. And I was pursuing this on top of it. And I was still doing, working out and all that. So it was like, you need to really, 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 really be passionate about anything that you're doing. Anything, whatever you're doing, if you want to do it for a long time, you want to be happy with it, you want to grow and leave a legacy behind it, 
you need to really love what you're going to be doing and passionate about. Yeah. And lastly, take the actionable, actionable steps needed. It's really the biggest kind of really the biggest thing that I'm taking right. away from this is like the passion has to be there and the actionable steps has to be in line with it. So it actually work. It'll take you to where you where, where you Absolutely. not want but need to be, you know. You work at the people are gonna remember you for that. Like literally every single job or every single person reach out to me now like to do work for them and everything because you know why I reach out to you? Because I remember you were always working, you were always doing this, you were and people think you'll be in people's mind. Like you're gonna be in people's mind if you're working. But it's also that I'm doing that because of the passion that I have for it. Like I will literally I'm literally dreaming something about things that I could be creating and <laughs> how crazy things are. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Well, we are done with the interview and um the last day uh, well actually what i'm trying to say is please please um let us know where <laughs> you know hold on let me let me grab let me get my breath together hold on I'll, I'll cut this i had it in my head but then it started coming out I was like, <laughs> nope it's not coming out it's not coming out the through through the through line that i thought it was gonna be okay steve so on that note um where can people find you um do you have any and what are and any projects you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Um, so all of my social media is going to be at Steve DJ Lay, except for my blog is going to be Steve Lifestyle. Um, I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, and my blog, uh, YouTube pretty soon too. So it'll be the same. Um, it's at Steve DJ LA. Um, and projects that I'm working on, like I said, I'm working on launching my brand, uh, 2021. Um, I'm working also other personal stuff, another business that I want to open. Um, and projects that I'm working on right now. God, I have literally for 2021, I maybe have two projects that I'm going to be working on uh, with a team in a studio. Um, since this hasn't launched yet, I can't really talk much about it. Probably by the time we got it, probably. Uh, but, but I helped. Uh, Last last week of January, last Friday. Last Friday of January. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I'm working. Well, I'm working. Like I said, um, projects with two brands, big uh, sort of big projects. Yeah. Um, I'm helping out curate uh, some work for magazines, and um, like I said, my personal project, which is my brand, and another brand uh, project, which is going to be a business that I've been. Mean, probably trying to work with for like 10 years now. So hopefully by 2021, it's going to all come in together, at least the beginnings of it. Yeah. Um, but my, my brand should be out. My personal brand uh, should be out literally by 2021. Wow. Woo. That's exciting. I mean, that's really exciting. Yeah. Also considering what 2020 has been. Yeah. Into 2021, I think obviously surviving is enough. But even any, but even any, Anything more than that, you know, it's already like, wow, you know. So, well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Steve, you for having for me. Letting, for catch, not just catching up, but also like trusting me to um, answer these questions that I had that are like really, really, really deep, you know. So I super appreciated that. Of course. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to and let you know. Um, thank you all. Have a good day. See you next Friday at right. the next episode. Bye. This podcast show is a product of Studio Penguino. For more information about advertising, please visit www.adrianpenguino.com.